Hello and welcome you human fish who has once again been clickbaited. Uh, just kidding. This is the ultimate Venom answer guide. It will answer Venom answer questions you didn't even know you had, and it is by what some would consider the best Venom answer in all of North America. Uh, I am I am someone, so that is still a valid statement. But but in all seriousness, uh, this is a hero that like pro players would ban against me back when I was actually high rank, like you know rank 300, 400, and Jungle Venom answer was super good. Please, please at speed and uh, Dota Alchemy. Jungle Veno is still viable, but uh, it's not going to be the main focus of this guy. That's definitely not the main way you want to play Venomancer right now, but uh, it, is, it is definitely viable. And I'm going to break this up into a couple chapters. I'll put the timestamps in the description so you can uh, skip to them at your leisure. So we're just going to get start out with the skills. What do they do? Well, Venomancer's got three actives and a passive. His first ability is Venomous Gale. Venomous Gale is a point and click skill shot that is just gonna shoot a ball of venom in the direction anyone it hits gets affected. It slows by 50% on any targets. However, that slow does decay linearly over time. So as soon as you hit them, they're gonna be 50% slowed, but um, halfway into the spell, which would be seven and a half seconds, because it does last for 15 seconds. Halfway, they're only going to be slowed by 25, so it's still a pretty strong slow, and the damage is very respectable. At level one, you're doing 100 magical damage over the course of 15 seconds, and at max level, you're doing 625 magical damage, so you're gaining 175 magical damage per level on Venomous Scale. Your second ability is Poison Sting, which is a passive ability that's going to afflict a minor poison to anyone you or your play ward attacks. It is a simple damage over time at level 1 doing 36 to 108 to 216 to 360 at max level magical damage, all the while reducing the enemy's move speed by a small amount and their HP regeneration by 15 scaling up to 30 percent. So what this means is this axe has 5.2 HP regen and if I go ahead and I attack him is 4.5. So remember he had 5.2 now he has 4.5 and that's at level 1 only. At max level it's going to be twice the amount that we reduced there because it's going to be a 30 percent reduction. And then his third ability is play ward which is going to summon a ward unit type that is going to start auto attacking whatever it can. You can control these, select their target, or do whatever you please with those wards. And as for the scaling on this, you're getting 125 HP for the ward per level, and you're getting 9 ward damage per level. Do keep in mind that plague wards are a damage type known as piercing. And you don't really need to know the war the the word for the ward. But what piercing means is that it's doing half damage to heroes. So right now the axe is taking six damage from the ward, even though it says thirteen damage. Well why is that? It's because it does half damage and then armor value is applied. So uh, the damage from these are very minor, but it does add up of course, because they live for uh, they live for forty seconds. And you can set them up really fast, having only a 5 second cooldown. So it adds up, but individually the damage is extremely tiny. However, that that number is fully effective against creeps. So, it is excellent for creeps. For farming them. And then lastly, you have your ultimate Poison Nova, which is just an AoE damage over time. At level 1, 720. At 2, 1170. 3, 1620. And at 3 with Agonims, 2,250 magical damage over 18 seconds. So if you know anything about Dota, you know that those numbers are freaking insane. Uh, that's the best damage you're going to find in the game, but for a spell at least. But it is over the course of 18 seconds. A lot of things can happen during 18 seconds, like people TPing home, 
using BKB, a ton of HP regeneration, right? Because it's damage over time, but they're regenerating over time. Don't forget about that as well. And the biggest kicker of all is that it's not lethal. They cannot die to this spell. They will always be left at 1 HP. It is impossible to die to Poison Nova. Unless we're talking about a very fringe situation where they're Ice Blasted at the same time. But in that situation, they're not dying to Poison Nova, really. They're dying to Ice Blast. Alright. So those are all the spells. Let's get into a couple tips and tricks. So why is my Venno sandwiched between a couple axes? That's just to show you the really the only trick there is to the first spell, Venomous Gale. So you see this axe here? I want to cast Gale on him. Uh, I can't do it. Why can't I do it? I can't do it. I can't walk past these axes. Uh, actually, you can. Oh, I hit him. I hit him with quite a bit to spare. Click on him. Uh, I can't do it. Just like I... Iron? Lion's Earth Spike. This spell has an AoE to it. It's going to go further than the cursor makes it look like. This is very relevant if, let's say, you're walking in on a lion. Okay? Uh, a lion that has stunned an enemy. They're about to become unstunned. You might miss the gale now, or they're going to blink away after the stun or something like that. You're not quite in range to walk all the way there. Don't worry about it. Just cast it a bit in front of them, and you're going to eke out an extra, like, 110 distance on the uh, on the gale and hit them perfectly anyway. This is also very relevant for going over cliffs. So, let's say Axe is in the river. And my Venomancer... This is, like, the ultimate uh, efficiency play you can do with the Venomous Gale, so here's Axe, I'm going to click on the Axe. Oh no, I can't hit him, my Venomancer is walking like all the way around. Okay, this might be a little much, but let's, this is going to be a little much, I think, but let's see. Yes. No, actually, wow, see, what did I tell you, I, what did I, why, did I, why did I even doubt myself, why did I even doubt myself? See, I hit him with that by just casting, by just casting in his direction, not actually clicking on him. Look at all that extra range. Like, I can click like that much in front of him, and my Venom's like, oh shit, what do I do? Let me just walk around. But if I just cast, boom, hit. So, eke out that extra range on Venomous Scale. It's going to help you hit a lot more. As far as hitting it on somebody easy, maybe consider waiting until they're a little bit closer if you have trouble uh, hitting the spell in the lane. You know, if they're, if they're trading with you, that means it should be very easy to hit right like if somebody's hitting you then how can you miss really how can you miss so that's your trick on venomous gale poison sting how do you best utilize this ability well poison sting is actually of your regular abilities the best scaling because you're getting damage hp regeneration reduction and the duration the duration is extra relevant because don't forget the duration of our ultimate is 18 and we need Poison Sting or some other source of damage to kill somebody if they're affected by our ulti. So we want that 15 second duration on Poison Sting so that effectively our ulti is kind of lethal for at least 15 seconds. So, do we max Poison Sting first? Usually not. Usually we'll max Plague Ward first, but we'll get into skill builds and item builds after. But Poison Sting is definitely your best scaling ability. A lot of people don't max their best scaling ability first, though, right? Like, that's completely normal. Um, like, you want the abilities that are best early, not necessarily the best scaling. And Plague Ward is that ability. That is the ability that is best early. And then Venomous Gale is your best value point. But I have maxed all of these first at some point or another, and we'll get into the gameplay later on. But with Poison Sting, you want to, let's say there's two enemy heroes, you want them to go hit, hit, apply to both. Don't just focus one hero, which is a bit contradictory to what you might be used to as any other hero. You know, why split your DPS, right? Well, that's because it's so important to spread this debuff. Uh, Plague Wards will help you do that job too later on, but the Plague Ward only applies Poison Sting at half damage. It is full slow and full HP regeneration reduction, though, so it's really not... You know, it's not extraordinarily worse, but the DPS is going to be halved uh, if you afflict it by Play Ward. Whereas with your 
right click, it's going to be the full 24 damage per second. Not really any tricks to this, just make sure you spread it around. Um, the value on this ability is extreme at all points in the game. For example, a tango is going to regenerate you for 112 health, but with a with just level 2 poison sting, that same tango is going to heal not even quite 90. It's going to do 90 heal compared to the 112 that it used to do uh, without poison sting. So this is great at punishing people with uh, a lot of regen. Tangos are like just straight up the most popular item in the game. Keep in mind this does not reduce heal, so something like from a mechanism would not be reduced. If it says heal, or if you think it's a heal, like Omni Knight Purification, it's not reducing that. But if that heal, or spell, air quotes, is from regeneration, like Necrophos, it will reduce that, but it will not reduce heals in terms of burst heal. Or it's not even like burst heal, it's just like if it's worded as heal. For example, Oracle's Purifying Flames, that's a heal. Even though it's kind of over second over time, it's still not considered regeneration, it's considered a heal. So you're not reducing that. But you will reduce the enemy uh, HP regeneration in lane, make their tangles less effective, and so on. The spell used to do 30 DPS, now it does 24, but it did not used to do the HP regeneration reduction. At 16 HP regen per second, this spell is strictly better now. It's still usually better earlier or anyway, because of uh, things like reducing the effectiveness of tangos, as well as the uh, the fact that it's really effective against magic resistance now. Like if you just got pipe, you could almost never kill somebody with poison sting damage. Like they would like heal more than it's, this would deal per second. So against things like pipe and hood or whatever HP regeneration source, way better, and in the late game, way better. All right, Plague Ward. This is kind of your signature ability. Put this on cooldown at all times. This should never be, I'm gonna turn off free spells just to make it clear. Make sure this is never ready. You always want to use this if it's feasible. It's only 20 mana. As long as you have good mana, be using this. Even if you don't have good mana left, just use it anyway. This is like a miniature ward. See this? This is the same thing, but it attacks. This is just like an observer ward. The first, like, if, if this is me pushing right now, obviously this is just demo mode, let's pretend I'm pushing this tower. Boom, you want to put a ward there. You want to put a ward here to see if they're TPing in the trees. You should be using these just like their observer wards. And then obviously once you got the Observer Ward Plague Wards out, if you will, then you're going to put them down with the purpose of defending your tower or pushing the enemy tower, farming, whatever. But you got to use these things just like Observer Wards. These should never be ready. Anytime this is cooling, uh, not cooling down, you're probably making a mistake. This is just your bread and butter ability. It's going to be so important to have these things out in the fight because really Venno has short attack range and usually is dying pretty early on in the fight because he's pretty fragile and he wants to go in first. So you might not be able to right click everybody in the fight. That's where these buddies come in handy to make sure that your ulti can effectively be lethal because if you do not have Poison Sting or some form of DOT on them, this will never ever lead to a kill on Poison Nova. And yes, you can micro these. Uh, a lot of us hate microing, but uh, if you want to be good at him, you're going to have to micro him or his wards at least a little bit. Make sure you're spreading that Poison Sting. Or guess what, if you just die first and go in, well, you, you kind of aren't even having to micro them. You're just playing the wards. So even when you die, you're going to have at least a ward to play. Uh, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic here. It is important you play the ward when you die. Make sure you spread it out on everybody. Get that slow out on everybody. And that's really all there is to the play ward. But I'm not a super complicated hero or anything. Anyone watching this can play this hero effectively. 
And then you have the ultimate Poison Nova. I'd say when it comes to using Poison Nova, step one is you gotta know the AoE. And you gotta know a little bit of the mechanics to it. There's a little bit of a mechanic. So the the uh, AoE is, you know, as you can see here, as you can see, that's about the max range right there is hitting that axe at that distance. The ultimate also travels. As you can see, it's got a travel speed of 500. So, like, if this demo axe here could, if this could end, there we go. So this axe, if I move very fast here, yeah, there you go. Dodge. So you can dodge it. So if you see somebody at the edge of your range here, make sure you're walking into them. Make sure you're walking into them while it's casting. This will like hit anyone that enters the uh, AOE. We can get another axe here. Let me give him a blink dagger. All right, just try to do this really fast here. So as you can see, this axe will be out of out of the AOE. But if you blink in, you see that that cloud that lives for a second. Anyone that comes into contact with the cloud during the second that it's coming out will be affected. So when do you best use the ultimate? Just as soon as you can. How many people do you need to hit? Well, yes. Yes, you do want to use it as soon as you can because remember, it lasts for 18 seconds. So you don't want to use it at the end of the team fight. At that point, you're not really affecting the outcome of the fight. Like it will maybe help you pick up a kill that you would not have gotten, but as far as changing whether you win or lose, it does damage too slowly to change really whether you win or lose. Uh, this does this damage does cancel blink daggers as well. The poison sting damage does not. The hits from Plague Ward and Venomous Gale do. And Poison Nova, but not Poison Sting. So get this out early. I would say if you can hit two or more, that's amazing. Like two, that's fine. If it's a pick off, feel free. Just use it on one person. But yes, in a team fight, hitting only one person with this is probably not good enough. But uh, certainly, I'm comfortable with anything more than one. And you do want to use this super duper early because, like I said, 18 da 18 seconds. That's that's a really long time. You want to use it as early as possible so you can change the team fight uh, in your favor. On to my favorite part: the item and skill build. Venomancer is very good right now. The best he's been, I would say, since whatever patch that was where he was extremely effective in the jungle. Here's why he's so good right now. Firstly, slows are more effective than they used to be with the boots and the movement speed changes. So boots now give him 45 movement speed. Let's say you're a 300 move speed hero. That means they're moving at 345. You slow them by 50%. Now they're walking at 172 and a half move speed. Well, how did it work before? Well, before, they were 300 move speed plus 15%, so still 345. But when you slow them by 50%, they actually moved at 195 move speed. And that's because you could not slow percentage-based increases. So you're slowing them noticeably more because you got slows from Poison Sting and Venomous Scale. You're, you're slowing them noticeably more than you used to only a, a month ago. Additionally, the item build on Venom is the most streamlined and most effective that it has ever been. Part of the reason is also items that you hate seeing got got nerfed hard. Aura items, things that effectively were heal over time, these items got hard nerfed. Hard nerfed, and that is a big, big win for the Venom answer. So let's just jump right into the guy. Let's start with abilities first because it is easiest. So, what do you do level one? That's gonna be up to your own discretion. If you need a kill or if you need Venomous Gale to make your support do a lot of damage, then we'll go that level one. If you don't, we'll go Poison Sting level one. So for the sake of this guide, we'll say Venomous Gale level one, Poison Sting two, Venomous Gale three, four, five, and again, there's a ton of deviation in the skill build, but let's, if this was enough to win your lane, then we pivot out of these skills completely. If this was enough to win your lane, and we'll just go into maxing play word right away. 
if this was not enough points in these two ability to win your lanes, go ahead and take your ulti at 6, take Poison Sting at 7, and then go into the Plague Wars. But this is, again, just the most cookie cutter build that I can provide right now. You're going to have to use your best judgment in the game, but right now, this is the build that I am going to give you. We are going to skip our talent at 10. The only time you're going to take your talent at 10 is if you're uh, a no Venomous Scale build against like a Juggernaut, maybe. Then you'll just go ahead and you'll take Plague Ward Duration at 10. Or if you're a max Venomous Scale build, for whatever reason, maybe you were 1v1 versus a Void Spirit or something and you just wanted to win your lane super hard and you had a ton of experience. We'll instead opt to take our talent at 13. We're going to go Venomous Gale CD, but I, uh, the, this talent is, is viable too. And then at 15, we're going to go the Gale Impact Summons Wards. This one did not get affected by the talent nerfs of 7.26b, so it's just that much better now. It was already the better one, but it's even better now. Poison Nova Duration. This spell lifesteal just, it just kind of sucks. It's just really reactive and situational. And the Plague Ward damage. And there you have it. This is the skill build for the Venom. And now into the more juicy stuff. My starting item build is the same every game with only one tiny variation. And that would be, do you want Ring of Protection or do you want Circlet? You can expect to be right-clicked a lot in any lane realistically, and that's why you'll usually go Ring of Protection, but maybe if you don't expect to be right-clicked a ton, like it's mid lane and they are melee or whatever the reason is, then just go ahead and go the circlet for those extra stats. Both of these items build into urn, so we will use everything here eventually. And we will probably straight up just rush urn before even boots or wand. Pick up a nice little wind lace as well. Don't be afraid to pick up wards and such. And the first major item we're going to go is Spirit Vessel. Spirit Vessel is extremely good right now. Especially for a core offlane hero that's just in the middle of the fight. You're just passively re uh, reducing regeneration on everybody. Add that on top of Poison Sting and it just gets to be ridiculous. So this is going to be your straight up first item. Feel free to stop by for a Bracer at some uh, point in there. Maybe a Wraith Band if you're mid or carry. As for our boot upgrade, well, you don't even have to upgrade them really. You can go a lot of boots. Uh, most commonly, I'll go treads at the moment. You can go travels. You can go greaves. In fact, before the most recent patches, this was normal. You would usually just go your auras with greaves and pipe, just like every other offlaner, right? That was like every offlaner's build, but... Um, Thankfully, they kind of nerfed the aura items really hard, which has opened up a lot more build variation, which, again, is a huge benefit for Venomancer, because this guy hated the sustain items, and you didn't really have synergy building them. You only built them because they were so good. So we're going to opt for treads here. Uh, some people go phase. Don't do this. Just don't go phase. It really sucks. The move speed is so minor. The damage... Like, you want things like urn and small items first anyway, so like, the time you're going to complete phase boots is going to be, the laning stage is going to be done. So like, using these to bully somebody is, is hardly going to be relevant anymore. Whereas this nice DPS increase from treads or HP increase is going to end up being way more beneficial for you. So, we got our, at this point our inventory is vessel, treads, wand, windlace. And now we have a couple things we can stop off for. So one that I'm going recently is uh, Blade Mail. This item is just really cheap. And it has a little bit of synergy with Venno, only in the sense that you deal damage so slowly that you get out all your spells, and then what do the people do? They just focus you and murder you. Well, then you can turn on your Blade Mail, and now that damage over time, it looks a lot more scary because they're losing a lot of HP fast from Blade Mail, and then that damage over time starts to actually get to the point where it could be lethal 
soon as opposed to 15 seconds down the line. So this you don't have to go the blade mail, but I will throw it in here for this particular uh, guide. And then after that, I will still usually go for a pipe or a halberd. Halberd's a big one right now and is what I'm building more so than even pipe. Venomancer has no defensive utility at all. Literally nothing he does can really save him from getting killed or gone on. So something like Halberd is really effective. You don't have a stun, you don't have anything defensive. So Halberd, super duper effective. Uh, nice on just an offlaner hero type of hero in general to live longer and it will disarm people that otherwise could just focus you and destroy you. Pipe, if there's a lot of magic damage, still a fine item. Very expensive now, but still still a completely fine item. And then we will go ahead and we'll put in an Aeon disc and if the game somehow goes super duper late, we will go ahead and get a sheep stick. And that will be your sixth slot right there. Vessel, boots, halberd. You don't need pipe every game, but maybe pipe, and disc, blade mail, and then you can maybe replace something for this scythe at the end of the game. And disc is nice because if you just, again, if you get bursted, well, is your that's just it like there's nothing you, there's nothing you can do whereas if a bunch of people gather around you and they can't kill you because of Aeon disc bam you just hit a four person ulti also the the downside air quotes of not dealing damage it kind of doesn't matter like you still actually do poison sting damage it doesn't prevent poison sting damage uh, it will prevent the ulti damage but who cares the ulti lasts forever so losing out on a bit of that matters not at all. But there is a ton of situational items. This guy is just, you know, a utility offlaner. You can build a bunch of different things. The biggest one I might get questions about is the Aghanims. When do you go the Aghanims? So the Aghanims did get a little bit better with specifically 7.26b because they made creep bounties higher again. Um, it was pretty bad. It was really bad, actually, I think, before... Uh, before they re-increase the bounties because y you want to get this item early so you can actually make use of the low cooldown that it gives your ultimate. And then if you get it late in the game, the DPS increase is nice, but the cooldown might not matter because the team fights are so far between now if it's late game. So definitely consider this if you're very rich and if you can get it like at latest third item like if you don't need vessel well you always need vessel period but if you don't need blade mail or halberd immediately feel free to pick up that ags because that's the window where it's most effective to get it in again everything past vessel is is a little optional really i wouldn't really call halberd optional i think this is kind of an every game like there's no chance really that the enemy has zero right clickers but and then blade mail if they can't control their damage, like their Alina or a gyrocopter. If they can't really choose whether or not to hit you, or it will save you from a combo in the sense of Lena or Shadow Fiend or something, then we definitely pick a blade mail. And then of course, any old utility item, literally any utility item, all of this stuff is super viable on Venomancer. Another question I'll probably get is Veil. Why not Veil? Uh, well, this item sucks now. It just really sucks. It increases damage. Uh, it used to increase damage by 25. Now it's just 20. This item just really sucks. If you have some, if you have a ton of teammates that will benefit from this, okay, you can still go. But this item is trash. And very situationally, you could pick up an Octarine Core. This can really, really, like, once you're 25, especially, like, in the late game, the Plague Wars just... They, you just pile up on these plague wards. You're hitting the gale which summons more and you're just casting them every like four seconds and there's just a ton of plague wards you can create a ton of tower pressure in a high ground push. Some items that I've seen that you should never go, Aether Lens, this is really bad, but I've seen people like crit go it. Um, those games did not end well. Uh, this is just really bad I'm afraid. Getting extra range on just Ward and Gale is not enough. 
And they're not really spells where range matter that much. Not really, so. Stay away from Aether Lens. Stay away from right-click builds. Those are completely unviable now. Even if you are playing Carrier mid Venom, which is which is fine. You can definitely play those, but uh, you cannot really do... You cannot justify going right-click on this guy. It would have to be some sort of insane scenario where you have no right-click whatsoever. And then even then, you probably would want to just go Auras then so you can end the game so you don't suffer so bad from having no right-clickers. But here you have it. Alright, the video is getting to be way too long at this point, so what I'm going to do is make a part 2 video in a few days where I include gameplay and discuss uh, why I made certain decisions and how to win certain lanes or what to do in losing lanes and, and whatnot. So check back in probably only two days at most for that video. And thank you so much for watching, guys. Peace out.